Hey everybody, welcome back to DieHardOutdoors.com. Uh, today we're going to tie a woolly bugger using number 8 pot black thread. Uh, I'm going to tie on a bead head and just tie a base behind it. Bead! Now you're going to see I'm just tying lead behind the bead. I like to wait the fly to get it deep. I like to fish it between rocks. Now I'm going to tie in the tail. I'm tying this one brown. Um, I use the back end of the marabou feather, um, the very tips. I like to pinch it down and measure it uh, to about the same size as the hook length. And you can see here I'm just pinching off all the very thin blood feathers that extend out. Um, it makes the tail a, little, a lot more bushy uh, so that when it's floating through the water, it pulsates and gives off a lot of oxygen. Again, when I lay down the tail, I want to measure it to about the same size as the hook. And I'm going to give it a few loose wraps just to secure it in place. You'll see it spin on you a little bit. So, like I said, you want to give it like one or two loose wraps. And then I like to tie the rest of my material down along the hook to make it a little bit thicker and it also makes everything more uniform now I'm just gonna take my excess and just trim everything off and once again just make everything uniform by tightening down any of your tag ends. Now just uh, you're gonna bring back your thread to tie in some flashing to give this fly just an extra trigger effect. Now, like I said, you're going to use flashing, and you're going to fold down on one side. I like to use the side that's facing me first. I'm just going to give it one wrap. Now I'm going to adjust the flashing to my liking. Just put it kind of midway down the feather. Once I finish my side, Wrap it tight once or twice, and I'm going to just fold it over to the other side, and in a second you'll see you'll have two sets of flashing on each side of the feather. Once I fold this over, give it a few wraps behind, and now you have flashing on either side of the feather. And I like to cut it just a little bit past my tail. Now I'm going to tie in the body, which is just round chenille. I like to use it with a little bit of sparkle in it. So I'm just going to tie in the chenille hanging off the back. I'm going to tie it down tight. And the next material I'm going to use is going to be saddle hackle. And you want to pick one that fairly sizes up to the shank gap in your hook, the gap of your hook. And pull off any excess blood feathers. And I like to tie in mine with the tip first. So what I'll do is I'll just pull back on the feathers to 
expose the few feathers in the front and tie them down tightly. And then I'm going to bring my thread all the way up behind the bead. Now I'm going to take my body with chenille and make close, tight wraps all the way behind the bead. Here I'm taking my ribbing, which is the saddle hackle, and I'm going to take it and just wind it forward in wind gap, wide gapped spaces. And now when I get to just near behind the bead like this, I'm going to go tighter wraps to make a very thick collar. Um, you'll see I'm going to pull back on the hackle just so that as I tie it in it has a backward pitch I'm going to do two or three wraps right up front then I'm going to tie it in If you notice I'm pulling back on all the material and just doing a few wraps in front before my whip finish I just want everything pointed backward There you have it guys, the woolly bugger. Awesome fly to fish. You'll have a lot of fun with this fly fishing it as a streamer or just dead drifting it. Thanks for watching DieHardOutdoors.com. Beed! <laughs>